Moon and Leo. So whenever the moon is doing this rotation in Leo, Leo is all about fixed fire, fixated on their own ways of feeling and seeing about their passions, their desires, and the way they express themselves. So of course, anytime a fire is fixed, a fire like to be stable and expressing itself in that stable manner. And of course, it's all about, you know, actions. And of course, the sun rules Leo. So and that's the fifth house constellation. So pretty much whenever the moon is doing this works in Leo, this is the area and location where you need to basically be going ahead and of course expressing everything on the stage or giving shine, giving light or giving attention towards things. And of course, you know, if you want to, and of course, making sure that you are pretty much acting out the stars and your alignment and your house and the way these energies is basically being conducted. So with that basically being said, we got a square moon on our hands. So whenever we got a square moon on our hands, these are forms of tensions. So of course, this is pretty much a learning stage between the moon being in Leo, sun being in Scorpio. Now these two signs are similar when it comes to modalities. Fixated, fixated energy. So they both are stubborn in their own ways of dealing with their feelings and emotions, Scorpio. And of course, the other one is stuck in their own ways of expressing itself, Leo. So, fire is all about feeling and seeing and expressing. Water is all about feelings and emotions and, of course, sinking inside of it. But, Mars is also ruling Scorpio. So, Pluto is also the co-ruler of Scorpio, which is a generational concept. But, we also got Mars in Scorpio. We also got the Sun in Leo. And, of course, we also got Mercury in Scorpio. I mean, we got the Sun in Scorpio. Moon is in Leo, Mercury is in Scorpio, and of course we got Mars in Scorpio. So basically, wherever Mars is at, Mars is going to give you that drive, that force, that uh, aggression. And of course it's going to have you in competition energies. And you pretty much are going to just do things without thinking. You ain't going to beat around the bush, and you ain't going to play around. You're going to be on your one too. So that's basically what's going on and happening for Scorpio. So yeah, all Scorpio is going to be very, you know, direct, tense. And, you know, things that you may normally do in the dark, you may basically be doing it in the light with, with the moon rotating itself in Leo, depending on wherever you had these planetary alignments. So these two planets, two these two signs always clash. They always clash. Feel me? One want to be in the opening and express things and be out there. The other one want to be hidden private and secluded in their own boat and want to do things behind the scenes. So this is where these both of these signs need to learn. This is where both of these signs can learn from each other. See, Scorpio can learn how to be a little bit more open. And um, Scorpio can teach Leo to not express everything at the moment. To where, you know, it can save your life, save you, save somebody else's life, and so so on and so forth. So now, um, yeah, we got a square in our hands. So, of course, it's going to be a learning stage when it comes to our, in, our wants and needs. We're going to go through learning stages during this time for me. So, yeah, pretty much we're going to break down these energies. So with the sun square moon, this is learning how to express and not express things. So pretty much we got the sun and uh, Scorpio, moon and Leo. So it's learn, learn how to express things and not express things on both ends. So you got to have a balance between these two. Also, we got the sun conjuncting Jupiter right now. So with the sun conjuncting Jupiter, this is deep action. This is deep experiences when it comes to our actions. Oh, this can pretty much be expand deep um, actions being expanded, but also obstacles can come with these situations. So that means our actions can be telling us to express ourselves and be deep. Jupiter can be pretty much telling us to have patience, faith, hope, and luck. So it's like you want to just run out there and go get it, but Jupiter is also telling you to be wise about just running out there and go get it. Also, we got the moon square Jupiter. So pretty much with the moon square Jupiter, this is learning how to emotionally ex expand during this time in a very patient way. So don't rush things, don't false things. Take your time. We also got Mercury conjunct. We also got Mercury opposing Uranus. With Mercury opposing Uranus, this is our mind going toe to toe when it comes to our uniqueness and our originality. Your mind can be telling you one thing. Uranus can be telling you to be unique and original, but your mind is saying you do this, do that. So. This, when this when there's a 180 going on, there's tension, there's um obstacles. So, feel me? Use these obstacles to help you gain power, control over your way of thinking, 
and gain power and also pretty much put yourself into a situation of utilizing your uniqueness and originality and not letting certain ideas stop you may have some deep thoughts and deep ideas about doing things on your own that may basically tarnish your actions or how you express yourself but you got to pretty much go through those obstacles you got to go through those oppositions to prove to you and of course the universe that you already am prepared to pretty much take on any challenge that faces you or come your way we also are dealing with mercury trying neptune so whenever you got a mercury trying to see mercury and neptune these planets is kind of like um what you would say debilitated these two coming together to debilitate it but we got a trine here so whatever is a trine is a gift so with mercury trying neptune this is a this is a gift to think deeply about fantasies and realities hear me that means you can have a gift to be direct to you can have a gift to be thinking passionately about your actions towards your dreams and fantasies and reality we also got uranus sextile neptune with uranus sextile neptune this is opportunities that you may take um heed to towards being developing your own unique dreams and fantasies and reality we also got neptune sextile pluto with neptune sextile and pluto these are opportunities that you need to take your dreams and your reality and transform it as a generation so transform your generation how what can you do to change this world make this world a better place that starts with you where we got neptune and pisces at and pluto and capricorn cuss cuss at on our aquarius we also got the sun conjunct mercury so this is the power to express yourself deeply and think deeply so you're gonna be expressing yourself deeply and and, and thinking about expressing yourself deeply you know what I'm we also got sun trying saturn this is the gift to express this is the gift to um take actions on your dreams and your reality <clears throat> and of course make your dreams become a reality and express your reality during the sun we also got sun opposing uranus so that means our wants <clears throat> and our uniqueness of that is at odds so the needs will be uranus the wants will be um well we got uranus in the in the um in taurus so uranus falls in taurus so this is like oppositions and obstacles when it comes to what we want to take action on and what we are going to be rebelling and opposing against so we also got the um moon square mars so we may basically be feeling uncomfortable with tensions towards our passions or desires feeling uncomfortable about certain things during this time feeling uncomfortable about expressing our passions and desires for me or putting it out there and opening we also got moon opposing Pluto right now with the moon opposing Pluto this is feeling opposed when it comes to power and control issues we may basically be going through some power struggles during this time when it comes to what we need if we feel the need to express and we feel the need to pretty much deeply transform within our circumference we also got the moon shine Chiron so with the moon shine Chiron this is the gift to react and respond towards feeling the scene about expressing any traumas or new traumas that you had previously we also got mercury conjunct mars right now so with mercury conjunct mars this is thinking deeply about expressing your desires and your motives and what pretty much motivates you to get up out the bed every day we also got venus trying uranus so with venus trying uranus we're going to have this gift to value seriousness when it comes to our principles and what we are so you're going to have the gift to value your own way of dealing with relationships and how you relate and things that make you feel, you know, comfortable. But Venus is in Virgo where it falls. So <clears throat> let it fall. So we also got Mars opposing Jupiter right now. So our intent, intention, motivation, and desires, and passions is pretty much going to tug of wars and, and experiences during this time. I mean, because we also got Jupiter in Taurus retrograde right now so things kind of moving backwards too we also got mars opposing uranus so our intent passion motivation and desires it's going through a whole lot of obstacles when it comes to having our own unique generational perspective on things we also got uranus trying pluto right now if uranus trying pluto this is the gift to dive deeply within your um instincts and things that are pretty much hidden with inside of you to pretty much transform 
your own unique way of living in your own world and reality and society. Now, Leo in the houses. Now, wherever the moon at is where you're going to be reacting and responding to and manifesting. So, on the flip side, when the moon is waxing in Aquarius, the seeds you is planting, you're getting that back karma wise, 360. So, now, if you got the moon and Leo in your first house, see, moon, <clears throat> the moon and Leo in your first house, see, the first house is pretty much exalted. It's the exaltation. For me, Leo is exalted in the first house. So, that's predicated towards yourself so you're going to be pretty much in the phase of having a conjunction right now so you're going to be dealing with a strong conjunction when it comes to reacting and responding towards expressing yourself for me and of course that's feeling the scene about expressing your ways or other individuals within your personal life are going to be pretty much strongly expressing themselves towards you let me or wanting your love and attention your focus is to focus on you for the next for these next for these next days we about to have the moon going to Virgo. So your focus is pretty much to focus on you, feel me? And how to, how should that be basically looking? That should be looking in a way where it's predicated towards home and family during this time. The sun and Scorpio. So you're, you're, you're going to be basically going through that square right now when it comes to that phase. Also, now, your oppositions and obstacles will be basically be coming from um, your seventh house, Pluto and Pluto and Capricorn cusp Aquarius. So your sixth house and your seventh house is gonna basically be going through some opposite opposition to obstacles on the sound. That's dealing with your nine and five and that's dealing with your relationships. So watch out for these power struggles from these individuals. Also, you're gonna be going through some squares, some conflict during this time, which is 90 degrees. So the squares and the conflict is gonna be coming from home and family and your status and what your reputation is all about. That's that's where it's gonna be basically coming from. Also, you're going to be having opportunities that's going to be lingering your way when it comes to your um, third house. And basically, when it comes to your 11th house, so be aware of that. And also, you're going to be having some gifts, some grand trines gifts that's going to be coming to your way when it comes to your first house, your fifth house, and your ninth house. So be aware of those areas. Your fifth house will be predicated towards Sagittarius, your ninth house will be predicated towards Aries. Now, if you got the um the moon and Leo in your second house, see the moon is exalted here. Feel me? And if you got Leo in your second house, um you are a cancer ascendant. So that means you're gonna be basically going through a learning phase, learning how to react and respond towards Feeling the scene and expressing yourself when it comes to your values and what you, what you value and what your self worth is about. Now, you also are, and how should that basically be looking? That should be, you should be looking in a very fifth house manner, in a very childlike manner, in a very, you know, um, a deep, deep way of expressing love and romance. Don't sound so your focus is love and romance. Don't that sound whether that's with you, your kids, or yourself. Or someone that you pretty much have a connection with. Now your opposition and your tug of war is going to basically be coming from your 8th house. And your ninth house. Pluto and Capricorn. So secrets and experiences. That's your tug of wars. Now your, your um, squares, your 90 degree angles is going to be coming from your 5th house. And your 11th house, your association. So it's going to be your squares during this time. For me. Also, um... You are going to be having opportunities that's going to be basically coming your way. So check for that. That's going to be in your fourth house, the one home and family. And your twelfth house, your subconscious. <clears throat> Watch out for those opportunities that's going to be coming your way that you can use. And your gifts that you are going to be facing is going to be coming, dealing with money, um, your services, nine to five jobs, or your status and what you're known for. So be aware of those gifts. Now, if you have... Moon and Leo in your third house. You a Gemini ascendant. So that means you're going to have opportunities that you need to be going ahead to react and respond towards third house energies. So that's dealing with the mind, the intellect, um, social media, your environment, your surroundings, siblings, neighbors, and friends, and things of that matter. That's going to be your focus for, for these next days. Also, you are going to basically be having some um, oppositions and obstacles that's going to be basically coming your way when it comes to your ninth house. I mean, I'm lying. You're going to have opposition to obstacles that's going to be coming your way when it comes to your um your 8th and your ninth house. 
Your eighth house will be inheritance, money, money matters, and your ninth house is going to be experiences. So we're dealing with that cusp energy on Pluto and Capricorn and Aquarius. So that's the opposition going to be coming from your eighth and ninth house. Also, your squares and areas where you need to be going through learning next phases right now is going to be dealing with your sixth house, work, health, and routines, and services, jobs, and your twelfth house, your subconscious. Now, you're going to have opportunities that's going to be coming your way, which is going to be dealing with your um. You have opportunities that's going to be coming your way when it comes to your fifth house and your first house, you. And your trines and your gifts is going to be in your environment, third house, your relationship, seventh house, and your associations, eleventh house. Now, if you have moon and Leo in the fourth house, see the moon is home here. Leo in the fourth house right here. You're a Taurus ascendant. So that means, what does that mean? That means you need to be reacting, responding towards, feeling the scene, and expressing yourself when it comes to home matters. Privacy, comfortability, safety, security. That's where you're going to be gaining all the love, popularity, and attention when it comes to you expressing yourself when it comes to your home and your family within your household. The people that you call family. Now, your oppositions and your obstacles is going to basically be coming from your um, 10th house and your 11th house during this time. Your 10th and your 11th house. So be aware of those areas and locations. Feel me? Those are going to be the areas and locations that you're going to be basically going through some um, tug of wars during this time. Most most importantly. So yeah. Also, you're gonna be going through some squares, some tensions during this time when it comes to your seventh house and your first house. You your personal personality and your relationships. Your personal relationships. Now, you're you're gonna be basically dealing with some opportunities that's gonna be lingering your way. When it comes to your um sixth house and your second house. So that's valuing a routine during the sun. Those gonna be opportunities. And you're gonna have gifts that's gonna be basically coming your way when it comes to your eighth house, secrets, twelfth house, subconscious. Yeah, your fourth okay, your fourth house is gonna be the gifts. Home, eighth house gonna be the gifts. Secrets, twelfth house gonna be it. Subconscious. Home, secrets, and subconscious. So be aware of those areas and locations where you're gonna be dealing with a whole lot of gifts. That's gonna be lingering your way. Also, if you have <clears throat> the moon and Leo in your fifth house, it's strong here, it's home here, and it's comfortable here. So with that basically being said, you are Aries Ascendant, so you're dealing with a conjunction by the fault. So you're going to have the power to react and respond strongly towards excitement, entertainment, and things that make you feel, things that make you go, hmm, what does that mean? It's excitement, children, or, you know, romance, love affairs, you're going to have that um, conjunction of power to go ahead and react and respond to them. Also, your oppositions and your obstacles is going to be basically coming from your 10th house and your 11th house. So be aware of that. Your 10th house and your 11th house. So be aware of those, those, um, those oppositions and obstacles that's basically going to be facing. Also, um, you're going to be going through some tensions when it comes to your 8th house and your 2nd house. So this is pretty much um, self-worth and secret hidden agendas. So it's going to be the tension that's going to be rising during the time in your, in your um, charts. Also, you're going to have opportunities where you can pretty much uh, go deal with your seventh house and your third house. So that's dealing with friends and relationships. So that's opportunities that's going to be coming your way that you're going to be giving off or receiving. And also, you're going to be dealing with some um, gifts and trines when it comes to your um, fifth house. Ninth house and first house. So yeah, your fifth, ninth, and first is gonna be the trines during this time. So be aware of that be aware of that location and area. Also, if you have the moon and Leo in your sixth house, you were Pisces ascendant so about it. So if you got the moon and Leo in your sixth house, you're gonna be reactive responding towards work, health, and routine matters. And your opposition, your obstacles is gonna be coming from your twelfth house and your eleventh house. Also, you're going to be basically placed into a situation dealing with some conflict and tension when it comes to your ninth house experiences and third house environment. You're also going to basically be dealing with some uh, opportunities that's going to be coming your way when it comes to your eighth house, secret desires, and fourth house, home and family. And last but not least, you're going to be basically dealing with some trines and some gifts that's going to be basically predicated towards your tenth house and your twelfth house. So your tenth house, that is career and goals and what you're known for, and your second house. Your money matters and resources and material. 
I mean, that's going to be six house energies. So be aware of those um, gifts that's going to be lingering your way. Also, moon, if you have the moon in Leo in your seventh house, see the um, Leo falls in the seventh house. Also, seventh house is opposite um, Leo right now because you have Aquarius ascendant. <clears throat> the moon here is kind of exalted in the Venus, Venus, Arian, Venus Arian energy. So, it's going to be a whole lot of tug of war type shit going on. So, now, moon and Leo in your seventh house. You're going to be pretty much reacting to respondents' wars, filling the scene, and expressing yourself about your relationships or other people, places, or things that you have one on one relationships will be filling the scene and expressing themselves towards you. Now, um, you got the sun and Leo. I mean, you got the sun and Scorpio. In your 10th house so how should that be looking that should be looking towards relationship responsibilities during the sun learn how to have relationship respons responsibilities and setting boundaries also you're gonna have pluto and capricorn slash aquarius oppose you in your 12th house in your in your first house so yeah you're gonna be dealing with some oppositions or obstacles when it comes to your subconscious when you go to sleep you might have some nightmares or some dreams where you might knuckle up buckle up you're going to basically go through some transformation when it comes to your personality. Whether you're going to be pushing off these energies or receiving these energies. That's how it's going to play out. Now, you're going to be going through some square conflict square, square conflict tensions when it comes to your 10th house. Status, career, and what you're known for. And your 4th house. Home and family. So, that's be aware of those any energies that's going to square you. Or you can be squaring these energies. <clears throat> now, you're going to have opportunities that you can utilize that can help you to honor sign when it comes to putting your hope, faith, and love. Hope, faith, and love. Ninth house and fifth, fifth house. Hope, faith, and love. Ninth house and fifth house. God. So also, you're going to be dealing with some gifts, some trines that's going to be coming your way and it's going to be predicated towards your 11th house, friends and associations, and your third house, your environment. So those are going to be your gifts that you can pretty much utilize for these next few days. Now, if you have... The moon and Leo in your eighth house, under no circumstance situation, the moon falls in the eighth house. You feel me? If you have Leo here in the eighth house, it's kind of like it's gonna bring a little, it's gonna bring a little spark because it's also represented by the um, Mars and Mars energy is the eighth house, and co ruler is um, Pluto, so generation. Now, in this house right here, the moon needs you to react and respond towards inheritance. Desires, passions, and staying down until you come up. So you're a Capricorn descendant. So Pluto is already in Capricorn, cusp in Aquarius. So you already you already are used to these energies. So by default, you need to be reacting, responding towards like, filling the scene and expressing yourself when it comes to deep passions and desires and behind the scenes. So don't, don't express too much during the sound. Stay down until you come up. Now, yeah, and how that should basically be looking is it should be look it should be pretty much predicated towards and looking in a way where you miss where you got Scorpio at. So you have Scorpio in your um, 11th house. So that's dealing with friends, acquaintances. So pretty much that sh that's going to be your spark and where you need to be shining your light, 11th house. Also, you're going to be dealing with some um, oppositions or obstacles. That, that, like I said, that's going to be coming from your first house and your second house. So be aware of that. <clears throat> your money matters and your values. Also, you're going to be dealing with some squares, some conflict and intentions. When it comes to your friends and associations and your love matters. So be aware of that. Or you can be opposing them during the sound, so be aware of that. Also, you're gonna be basically be dealing with some opportunities that you can utilize during this transit within your tenth house, which you're known for, status and career, and your sixth house, work out for routines and um fitness. Also, <clears throat> you're gonna have some gifts that you can utilize, which is gonna be predicated towards your twelfth house, your subconscious, and your fourth house, your home and your family. So that's home family and of course the area and location where you lay your head at. Now, also, if you have the moon in Leo in your 10th house, the moon is debilitated here. And Leo in the 10th house is debilitated here. So, what does that mean? Oh, I mean, I'm lying. Ninth house. If you have the moon in Leo in your 9th house, see, the moon is exalted. It's just exalted in the 9th house. So, you're going to be going hard. Sagittarius Ascendants. So, Sagittarius Ascendants, you're going to have the gift to react and respond towards filling the scene and expressing yourself. When it comes to your meaning, reasonings, and principles, and traveling or education, and how and how should that be looking? That should be looking towards your subconscious. So, be hidden about certain things when it comes to 
certain things that you shouldn't be bringing on the surface. Certain things that's going inside of you. Keep that hidden. Now, you're going to be going through some oppositions and obstacles when it comes to your um, second house or your third house. Friends and associations and people that you associate yourself with, communicate with. They'll be aware. You might have some secret competition. Also, you're going to have some um, tensions when it comes to your 12th house, conflict, dealing with your dreams, imaginations, and your 6th house, things that you do every day. Now, watch out. You're going to be basically also dealing with some opportunities that's going to be coming your way. When it comes to your 11th house, associations and groups, and 7th house, relationships. So, compromisations when it comes to groups and friends and who you, have, you associate yourself with. Also, you're going to be having some gifts. That's going to be predicated towards your personalities and your love and romance. So be aware of the gifts that you can utilize that you will be pushing over for receiving. Now, if you got Moon and Leo in your 10th house, see the Moon is debilitated in the 10th house. And of course, Leo in the 10th house is kind of like debilitated a little bit because it's shit, that um, cusp of energy. You're a Scorpio in there. It's about a fault. You need to be reacting and responding and expressing yourself towards your status, career, and of course, what you're known for. We'll shine a light on that. And how that should be looking. That should be looking very selfish. So yeah, that's how that should be looking. And you're gonna have Pluto, you're gonna have Pluto opposing you when it comes to your fourth house and your fifth house. Feel me? So be aware of that area and location. So you're gonna have Pluto opposing you when it comes to your um when it comes to your second house and your third house. So be aware of that. Well, what, what am I talking about? Your third house and your fourth house. This is gonna be rare Pluto. It's gonna be opposing you. Also, the areas of locations where you're going to have tensions and conflict will be predicated towards you, your personality, and your, and your relationships. So that's going to be where the tensions and conflict is going to be predicated towards. And you're going to have opportunities that you can work with when it comes to your 12th house, your subconscious, and your 8th house, your desires. So dreams about sexuality, desires, or dreams about fighting any opposition to obstacles. So use that towards your dream journal when you go to sleep. Also... If you, you're going to have some gifts that's going to be coming your way that you can utilize also when it comes to your second house. Areas and locations where you want to have your own money and your sixth house being the service services. Now, if you have the moon and Leo in your 11th house, see the moon, see um, Leo falls here because it's you a Libra ascendant. So you need to be reacting and responding towards feeling the scene and expressing yourself in your when it comes to your associations <clears throat> or you'll be receiving these energies. And, um, how that should be looking, predicated towards making money. And who's going to be opposing you? And how, where your opposition will be coming from? Your fourth house and your fifth house. Love and romance, home and family. And watch out, you're going to be having some tensions that's going to be coming your way when it comes to your second house, money matters, and your eighth house, sexual urges or secrets. Also, you're going to be basically dealing with some um, opportunities that you can utilize within your personality and your ninth house. And watch out, you're going to be basically having some gifts and some trines that you can utilize within your third house. Environment around it and your seventh house relationships. And last but not least, Moon and Leo in your twelfth house. So um the moon is pretty much also exalted here. And Leo here in this house right here, it's kind of hidden, it's private. So that means you're gonna be basically dealing with some hidden um expressions. So you need to be reacting, responding towards feeling the scene and expressing yourself when it comes to your subconscious. But you need to just go within, get your sleep, relax yourself. Let me and when you clear all that out, yeah, um, shadow work, you'll be able to actually express yourself. And pretty much how that should be basically be looking towards, how that should be looking right now, third house energies. Put me? Sun and Scorpio. Now, watch out for your oppositions and your obstacles will be basically coming from your fifth house, love affairs, and your sixth house. Work, health, and job. That's going to areas and location where you're going to be going to some tug of wars. Also, your tensions and conflict and learning aspects that you're going to be basically going through is your third house and your ninth house during the summer. And also, you're going to be basically dealing with some opportunity that's going to be coming your way when it comes to how you make money and when it comes to your 10th house, how you are associated when it comes to your status, career, and goals, and responsibilities, and duties, and obligations. Also, last but not least, the, um, your gifts and your trines will be coming from your home, family, privacy, and will be coming from your 8th house. Your, um, I'm lying. Will also be coming. Your, um, I'm not lying. Your gifts and charms will be coming from your fourth house, home, family, and privacy, and also your eighth house. Things you do behind the scenes when it comes to your home, your family, and privacy. So do some um, do some shadow work within your home. 
in some areas and locations you're gonna have your gifts that could pretty much you know go in your favors in any way shape and form on how you utilize these energies and that's gonna be the energies we're gonna get into the tarot card reading real fast